It will be useful in what follows if we have a standard set of examples we can always refer to. So, I'm first going to consider an isosceles right triangle, meaning that both angles are going to be 45 degrees and the two sides must be equal. Now, I'm just going to say that the two sides are 1 for convenience, which means I need to figure out what this side is. So I'm going to use the Pythagorean theorem. And I get that this side is the square root of 2. Okay. From here, I can determine all six trigonometric functions of the angle 45 degrees. But as we already know, if I know sine and cosine, I know all the rest. So the sine of 45 degrees is opposite over hypotenuse, 1 over the square root of 2. As is typical, we don't like to leave square roots in the bottom, so I'm going to rationalize the denominator and get that the sine of 45 degrees is square root of 2 over 2. The cosine of 45 degrees is adjacent over hypotenuse, 1 over root 2. Once again, I rationalize the denominator, and I get that the cosine of 45 degrees is also the square root of 2 over 2. Okay. And just so we don't forget what the radian measure is, 45 degrees is also the radian measure pi over 4. Okay. Now, consider another triangle. This one is going to be an equilateral triangle, so all the angles are 60 degrees. Okay. Now, unfortunately, it's not a right triangle, which means we can't use the definitions we have of the six trigonometric functions on it. So, what we are going to do is drop an altitude. Okay. It cuts the base in half and the angles in half. So this angle is now 30 degrees. Okay. Now, I get to decide whatever side I want for the equilateral triangle. I'm going to give it side length 2. Since this altitude cut the base in half, this side now has length 1. Okay. And I'm going to call this B and use the Pythagorean theorem to figure out what it is. I get that my third side is the square root of 3. Okay. From this single triangle, I can now figure out the sine and cosine of both 60 degrees and 30 degrees. Okay. 60 degrees is pi over 3 radians, and 30 degrees is pi over 6 radians. So, for 30 degrees, the sine of 30 degrees okay, is the opposite divided by hypotenuse, one half, and the cosine of 30 degrees is the adjacent divided by hypotenuse, square root of 3 over 2. The sine of 60 degrees is the opposite of the 60 degree divided by hypotenuse, square root of 3 over 2, and the cosine of 60 degrees is the adjacent divided by hypotenuse, one half. Okay, this is a large class of examples, but I want one more. Only this one is going to be a little bit different. You notice in my third triangle, I have the right angle, but I also said this angle was 90 degrees. Since the angles of a triangle must add up to 180, that must mean that this one is zero degrees, which means this isn't a triangle, okay? It's not. It's not a triangle. The picture is not drawn to scale, okay? I know this. However, it still will obey both the Pythagorean theorem and the Sokotoa way of finding the six trig functions. Now, I get to call the side lengths whatever I want. I'm going to call this one 1. That's a side opposite a 90 degree angle, so the other side opposite the 90 degree angle must also be 1. And any side opposite a 0 degree angle must be 0, because there is no such thing as a 0 degree angle opening up to something bigger. Notice, 0 squared plus 1 squared is still 1 squared. It still obeys the Pythagorean theorem. Now, from here, I can compute the sine and cosine of both 0 and 90 degrees. So, the sine of 0 degrees is opposite over hypotenuse. 0 over 1 is 0. And the cosine of 0 degrees is adjacent over hypotenuse. 1 over 1 is 1. The sine of 90 degrees is opposite over hypotenuse, 1 over 1 is 1. 
and the cosine of 90 degrees is adjacent over hypotenuse. 0 over 1 is 0. Okay. And the radian measures of these, well, this is just 0 radians. This is pi over 2. So now we have a large class of examples which we simply know the trig functions for. And we don't have to rely on a calculator that will give us a decimal approximation.